Pepsi-Cola. P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Harding, counter spy. Calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, more in the case of the postal pirates. Another counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola hits a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12-ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money. Goes twice as far. Pepsi's America's big, big favorite, and America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi's best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, to Counter Spy. For weeks, David Harding has been on the trail of a million-dollar syndicate of thieves stealing packages from post offices in a number of eastern cities. Harry Peters, assistant to Mr. Harding, went undercover as a dishonest postal clerk named Harry Gordon and has made contact with one of the big shots of this racket, Frank Garrett. The two men are now driving in Garrett's car with Peters, alias Harry Gordon, at the wheel. Okay, Harry, stay on the west side highway now. Swell car. Handles nice. Yeah, I know. I like to drive. Except in city traffic. That's why you wanted me to take the wheel? One reason. And the other? <laughs> You're a bright boy, Harry. Thanks. Yeah, the kind of a guy we'd like to have if we were taking on new guys. You're not? We don't like volunteers. We like to pick out our own boys and hold them to us good and tight. I stick like glue where there's dough. Glue melts. We prefer something more solid. Now, you might be a right guy. Thanks. Or a stoolie. I can't sing a note. Maybe even a cop. I haven't got flat feet. Maybe, but we never take chances. Hey, slow down, will you? You're going too fast. I like speed. Now, don't get cute and try to get a cop on her tail. A lot of power in this motor. Slow down, I'll blast your head off. I thought you'd show a rod sooner or later. Okay, I showed it. Now, slow down. What for? Right now, this is the safest way I can drive. You crazy fool, look out! Close, huh? You don't slow down, I'll... Shoot? Then what happens to us both? The needle's pushing 70. 75. 80. You'll kill us both! Better than you killing me. Look at the needle. 85. It's a car! Okay, you win. You win. Only slow down. Toss the gun on the floorboard. Okay, okay. Now slow it, slow it. Turn out all your pockets and open the jacket wide. I don't want you to cross yeah, me. Sure, sure. I ain't got another gap. Police siren, a block behind. Cops, now we are in the stew. Maybe. That's a good boy. No more guns. Okay, bright boy, we stop. But what are you going to do about those cops coming? You'll see, tough guy. Get out. What is this? Only one plain clothes guy in that patrol car. Peters, I've been tailing you ever since you got into this car. What a race you stayed. He pulled a gun on me, Chief. 
The only way I could make him drop it was to speed up. Chief, who are you guys? Counter spies. Sorry it turned out this way, Mr. Harding. It practically tips our hand. Well, I'd rather have our hand tipped than you did. But come on, we're in a hurry. What about Garrett here? We'll turn him over to one of the other cars. Let's get going. There's the signal, Dave. You can go ahead. This is David Harding calling from New York. Attention counter-spy agents, Boston, Chicago, Detroit, and Philadelphia. Circumstances force us to move in immediately on postal theft investigation. Carry out all raids according to plan. Pick up all members of the ring you can lay your hands on. We will conduct raid on main warehouse of the gang here in New York. Act on this order immediately. Staked out around the warehouse, Peter? Yes, David, we're in luck. Oh, how? Conway tells me that Jimmy Morrison, the crooked postal clerk I've been keeping tabs on, went into the warehouse just a while ago. Good. Maybe a meeting of the brains of the... What was that? Shots from inside the warehouse. Let's go. You men cover the main floor of the warehouse. Peters and I'll take the office upstairs. Jimmy Morrison and that girl. Maybe they're still alive. No. She's not. Jimmy Morrison's gone, too. Here's a note. Note. Signed by Jimmy Morrison. Listen, Kathy was no good. She was poisoned and poisoned me. She ran this whole package-stealing racket and tricked me into it. There was no chance of getting away. I don't want to, and I won't let her, so I'm going to help her escape the only way she can, by taking her with me. Jimmy Morris. Hmm. Looks as if this girl, Kathy, was the big shot, Dave. Murder and suicide. This winds up the case nice and neat. Looks like it, Peter, isn't it? Wait a minute. The boy's holding the gun. Well, he was the suicide, according to the note. This was no suicide, Peters. It was murder. Double murder. The killer may still be in the building. What? Alert the squad. Have them go through this warehouse from top to bottom, fast. And that thug who tried to take you for a ride, Frank Garrett, get him up here. I want to talk to him now. Come on, Garrett. You can climb stairs faster than that. Okay, copper, don't shove. Keep moving. Yeah, sure. All right, Peter. I'll take care of Garrett. You take charge of the rest of the squad. Report to me on what you find. Right, Dave. What's this all about, Mr. Harding? You wouldn't know? No. Okay, let's go into this office. Maybe we can find the answer in there. Start moving, Garrett. Holy smoke. It's a pretty picture, isn't it? You know them, Garrett? The young man and the girl? Yeah. I mean, I... Yeah is a good enough answer. Maybe you'd like to read this note. Note? Go on. Help yourself. We found it in this room. Found something else, too. This kid killed her? Who'd have thought a punk like that? Could kill. Maybe the person who took this photograph. Photograph? I found it lying right here on the desk. A photograph of Jimmy Morrison murdering a man. Take a look at it. Yeah, I know what. Who's the other man in the photograph? I, uh, I don't know. Come on, Garrett, make it easy on yourself. This photo was a wonderful club to hold over young Morrison's head. That's probably how you forced him into this parcel post racket, wasn't it? I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, Garrett, who's the dead man in the picture? I told you, I don't know. Don't make me Mr. Laugh. Harding, you read the note. Like it says, that dame Kathy was the big boss in this racket. Okay, she's dead. He killed himself. That winds it up. What more do you want? I want the person who killed the girl and Morrison. The note is... The note was planted to mislead us. Look at Morrison. 
He's holding the gun in his hand. Well, sure, he shot himself. If he did, there'd be powder burns around the wound in his head. But it's a clean wound. That means he was shot from a slight distance by someone else. Look, I got nothing to do with it. You had your mitts on me when those shots were fired. Right. But you know who that someone else was. I don't know nothing. I ain't saying nothing. You're bright. Figure things out for yourself. Okay, maybe I will. No good, Dave. The boys have been through the whole warehouse. Whoever the murderer was, he got away. Through an abandoned sewer outlet we found in the cellar. I expected that, Peter. What about Frank here? He doesn't want to talk at the moment. Maybe we can change his mind. Maybe. In the meantime, get our fingerprint and photographic details. Go over this office, Peters. We're not closing this case till we've caught a double murderer. <laughs> came in from Washington. Any results, Peter? Yes. The man on the floor is Nick Bodie, alias this, that, and the other. Here's the rogues gallery wire photo they sent. Well, that matches this picture we found in the warehouse, all right. And according to that picture, Bodie's dead. Unless you figure the photograph for a frame-up. That's just what I do. There had to be a photographer. Everything all set up. The way I reconstruct it, she and Bodie framed the situation, a fight, so that Morrison could be tricked into this picture. Yeah, but to convince her... Look at it. Morrison holding a gun. Bodie falling to the floor. Bodie might really be dead. That's possible, but this picture was too easy for us to find, too convenient, right in the top drawer of the desk. You think he wanted us to look for a dead body instead of a live one? Yes. And far from being a murder victim, he's a double murderer. Send for Frank Garrett. We'll have another crack at questioning him about Nick. If he still won't talk, maybe we can use him as bait for our two-time killer. Product Buyers Incorporated, good morning. Mr. Richardson, I'm sorry he's busy. Will you call back later, please? Can I help you, sir? I want to see Mr. Richardson. Who shall I say is calling? Just Nick, Postal Sales. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Richardson will see salesmen on Tuesdays and Thursdays only. Beautiful, you give him my name, and if he says that too, I'll go away. All right. Just a minute. Mr. Richardson, Nick of Postal Sales to see you. Oh, yes, sir. Go right in, sir. That, that, that door. Thanks, beautiful. Hello, Nick. Come in, come in. Surprised to see me, Richie? What are you doing here, you fool? No. Is that any way to greet a partner, Richie? Every time the phone rings, I've been expecting counter spies. Now you're crazy enough to walk in. I knew you'd be worried, Richie. I wanted to ease your mind. Or leave the counter spies to me. Now, why would I do that? Where else would I find such a good partner for selling my goods? Selling? You're not thinking of keeping up this racket. Why not? There's still more millions in it. Not with me, Nick. You can find somebody else. But not with a setup like yours. You buy merchandise for about 2,000 stores throughout the country. We spread the stolen goods that thin, there's not a chance of tracing them. Nick, you read the papers. Counter spies figured they've broken up the parcel post ring. Even tab Kathy Thomas for the boss. <laughs> She's dead. What better setup do you want? What about Frank Garrett? They've still got him under arrest. You think he'll talk? Frank will keep his mouth shut as long as we do right by him. We? He doesn't know about me, does he? No. I don't leave you out. Because if he talks about me, I talk about you. What will we do, Nick? We've got to stop now, him. Take it easy, Richie. You're going to bail him out. Oh, no. I don't want to get into the picture. You won't. Just be ready with the dough. I know a guy who will handle the whole thing. In just a moment, we'll return to Counter Spy. Brought to you by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. 
Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question, why take less when Pepsi is best? No budget, no allowance, ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi-Cola. Because one big 12-ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste, twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi's best? Yes, families like yours and mine, families all over America, they're all saying, why take less when Pepsi's best? Pepsi-Cola hits a spot, tastes terrific when you're hot, more and better than the rest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, back to Counter Spy. In the Counter Spy field office in New York, David Harding and his assistant, Harry Peters, are again questioning the prisoner, Frank Garrett. Now, Garrett, I showed you this photograph once before. Yeah, yeah. It shows Morrison, gun in hand, standing beside a man's body on the floor. Yeah, I see. We know now that the man on the floor is or was named Nick Bodie. You know him? No. You know if he was head of the parcel post racket? You see who that is, Peter? Right. What's the answer, Garrett? Look, Mr. Harding, for the last time, I don't know nothing about nothing. In fact, I'm the most ignorant guy you ever arrested. So why don't you call it quits and let me go back to my cell? You won't have to, Garrett. Huh? What is it, Peter? A lawyer named Carver has just posted bail for Garrett. Well, now the conversation is getting pleasant. The guard outside will see that you get your property back. Go on, beat it. <laughs> so long, boy. Oh, of all the cocky Don't little... Forget that, Peters. His being bailed out is even better than our letting him go. I just hate to take that from a guy like him. Remember I thought we might use him as a decoy for Nick Bodie? This is our chance. I'll assign an agent to tail him right away, Dave. Well, Peters, put on the newest man we've got in the New York office. Well, Garrett's no dope. It'll take an old hand to tail him. It'll take even more than one. Now, get some new agent out right away. And then bring the four best men in here to me for special instructions. I want to make sure Garrett thinks he's free to go where he wants. Feel good to be out? Yeah, yeah, sure, Mr. Carver. Uh, you got anything else to say? Um, they'll put a tail on you. <laughs> Tell me something I don't know. Like, uh, who gave you the money to put up my bail? Look, call Paradise 23416 between 10 and 10.30 tonight. It's a lunch counter. Don't ask for anyone. If the right man answers, your name will be the first thing he says. That's okay, Carterman. I'm expecting a call. Frank, Garrett? Yeah. Hello, Nick. You recognize the voice? Sure. I knew you wouldn't forget me. You do any talking? Not even about the weather. Uh, but they got me on two counts, Nick. I don't want to stand still for them. You won't have to. I'll get you some dough and you can jump bail. You're uh, being tailed right now, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got the guy spotted. A crew cut. Strictly Joe College. Okay. Now, here's how you lose them fast. You know the Cooley Building, 32nd and Broadway? Yeah. There's a side entrance with only a revolving door. Right. Let him tail you in there. Then double back and out the same door. When you get outside, step on the doorstop. 
That'll lock the door so you can get away before he circles the corner of the building. Right. Cute trick. When you're sure you're clear, call me at Mercury 4 6000. We'll pick it up from there. Harding to Peters. You still with Garrett? Yes, Dave. He just got out of a cab at 32nd Street and Broadway. He's going in the Cooley building. I'm about a half a block behind in my car. Is Stephen still tailing him? Yes, kind of over-eager, though. I've got a hunch Garrett spotted him. Well, keep in touch. Wait a minute. Garrett just came out of the Cooley building. There's some trouble at the door. Stevens is locked in. Good. Garrett's back in his cab. Okay. Stay with him. Keep in touch with the other cars. Just make sure Garrett keeps on thinking he's in the clear. Nick, you shouldn't have told Frank Garrett to call here. This is my office. I've got my reasons, Richie. I'll get it. Hello? Listen, Frank. Remember Barney's Tavern? Drop in there for a drink. I'll be there. No, don't talk to me in the tavern. If it looks clear, I'll get up and walk out to the parking lot around the corner where they rent cars. I'll have one rented and settle things while we drive. Right. Okay, Richie. You happy now? Well, for goodness sakes, get out of here. Not without you, Richie. Where I sit, you're too comfortable. Too nice and clean. What do you mean? I'm the only guy who can tie you up in this racket. Something happens to me, you're in the clear. Look, Nick. Besides, there's no reason you couldn't walk out of me. Then I'm out on a limb. I wouldn't do that, Nick. Maybe not. But I believe in insurance, partnership insurance. I'm going to take some out on you, Frank Garrett's help. Nick, how long are we going to sit here? Frank's been at that corner table two minutes already. Don't get anxious. I just want to make sure there's no tail on him. No one's come in since he did. I know. I've been watching. If there are no cars out in the street, only that truck over there. Mm-hmm. I guess it's okay. Let's go. Garrett will follow us. Peters, how far are you from Brady? The next block, Mr. Harding. Brady, give Peters the direction Garrett takes. You follow, Peters. Peters, you pick up his trail. Right, Dave. A car is coming out of the lot now. A blue Dodge sedan. It's Garrett. Two other men with him. Going east, Peters. You can pick him up two blocks down. Okay, Nick, what's the pitch? Who's this guy? Relax, Frank. We need a chauffeur. Don't be cute. Who is he? I'll tell you, Frank. He's the nice man who's been selling all our stuff for us. Nick. Uh, shut up. I want you to meet the hired help. Frank, this is Mr. Richardson, the president of Product Buyers Incorporated. Why, oh, Nick, you've never been so generous with information before. I want this to be one big happy family. Besides, suppose something should happen to me. If you didn't know Richie, who'd help you? Nick, let's get to the point. They got plenty of time. No, no, not me. I want to get my dough and jump bail before the counter spies put another tail on me. Well, you got a point. Hey, car behind us. Yeah, I didn't bring no tail with me. Faster, Richie. See if that car stays with us. Okay, turned off. There's a dirt road up ahead at your left. Turn in there, Richie. Anything else behind us, Frank? Uh, uh, just a laundry truck. Let him pass us, Reggie. Hey, 
Okay. Turn in. How far do I go? I'll tell you when. How much dough you got for me, Nick? Five grand. Five grand? Hey, I can skip the country with that. Why not? Be a lot safer for everybody with you out of the country. All right, that's good enough, Richie. Stop here. Pick the gun. What's the matter, Frank? You've seen guns before. Nick, look, give me my dough. Let me lamb. I'm a right guy. You know that. Sure, sure. We've been buddies for a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Nick. You wouldn't... Kill you? What kind of a heel do you think I am? Oh, no, no, Nick. I, I didn't think anything like that. Well, why should you? Now, if Richie... Nick, you need me. You... Of course I do. Why should I kill a guy I need? We could take the dough, Nick, Nick and we... put those guns away. Don't get excited, Richie. I'm giving one to you. Me? Ah, I couldn't kill my buddy. You could. Then I wouldn't be a heel. Nick, no. I won't do it, Nick. I can't. Richie, you'd rather die instead of him? Look, Nick, Shut I... up, Frank. You wanted to leave the country, and now you're going to. Come on, Richie. I want something nice and big on you. Like murder. Please, Nick, don't make... Shut up. I heard it, too. Somebody over there in the brush. Yeah. Here! Over here! Why, you crazy you fool! Right, Garrett, buddy, you're covered from all sides. Counter fire. Hey, we'll get it. No, no, don't shoot me. If you want it the hard way, you get it that way. Peter, give him a sample. You're going to take me! Nick, no! I can't. I go on my arm, you crazy fool. I don't want to die. This is your last Come on, come on, I've got it. I'll kill you. He does it, Nick. Frank, you double-crossing rat. Get him out of this picture, Dave. Two crooks holding the third one for us. Very pretty. The gun. Take Bodie's gun. Uh, drop it, Bodie. I'll drop it. Oh. I said drop it. Uh. Oh, thank heaven. Okay, get out of that car. You're all under arrest for postal theft, except Nick Bodie, who's also under arrest for murder. Murder? You're nuts. You killed Jimmy Morrison and Kathy Thomas, and we'll prove it in court. All right, start walking. As far as that laundry truck down the road. Laundry truck? You've been tailing us all this way. Right, Bodie, and we'll keep tailing you straight up to the prison gates. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six, and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshments, remember... Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lot more value, lot more zest. Why take less when Pepsi is best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen next Tuesday for the exciting counter-spy case of the visiting vultures. It was a twisting trail of big-time bootleggers your counter-spies followed. From a small tavern in backwoods, Mississippi, to the lakefront of Chicago. In our counter-spy files, we call this the case of the visiting vultures. I invite you to be tuned in. Next Tuesday, case of the visiting vultures. On Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program, in part transcribed, originated in New York, was directed by William M. Sweets, dramatized by Palmer Thompson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi ice cold tonight. Thank <laughs> you.